Hello everybody, this is Pablo Vasquez in another and the last episode, as we know it, of Blender Today Live. We are restructuring things a little bit, but we're gonna talk about it in a bit. There is so much, I was in like this close to asking developers to just like stop adding things, because there is just so many, so many. 2.90 started the, the VCon 2 era, but there's no big new features added, so that's why, that's the reason. But, without further ado, let's introduce our guests, which you know, come on, is here every <laughs> every week, pretty much. So, hi. Hey, Pablo. Hey, everyone. Every oh, other week. I don't come here every week. Come on. It's uh, almost, almost. In two weeks. I anyway, miss being here. Hello, everyone. Yeah, last week I was over myself. Well. No, I'm myself with a lot of people. So, all right, get uh, let's let's get started. So, I'm um. There's so so much to go through. 2.83.1 was released this. Uh, this week and uh, a few days ago it was released so now you can get it and you should get it because it's a fixed release over 2.83 so if you had issues with a lot of people had issues um, with 2.83 now uh, you should update or if you use Steam or the Windows Store or Snap on Linux you will get it uh, updated automatically I think the Windows Store is still waiting for some kind of signed uh, certificate kind of a thing but yeah, Steam yeah. It's always a late one day, right? But that's the same with the official releases so far. But maybe the future we do can, we can have everything released at the same time. Nah, but then we, if we are all waiting just for Windows, come on. <laughs> that's just for the Windows Store. Like the Windows builds are going to be there so people can download it. But just the store? Well, oh, yeah, no, no. It's, it's not fair. Like I wouldn't make uh, people... I don't know how many people are using actually uh, the win the the Windows Store. Maybe we can get the stats. But it's more if, if you do manage to make the final builds already ahead of time, which you don't often, right? And yeah. you're just waiting for the social media for the you know scheduled day, then <laughs> yes. it, then there's nothing preventing us from having everything updated at the same time. No, there is really nothing. I mean, it's not that I'm waiting. So I'm uh, taking care of the social media and I even got a change in my job definition this week regarding that. So I will be taking even more care of that. Uh, but all right, let's get through it. I'm drinking cold mate today. Yes, it's actually called mate because it's the last episode. I gotta celebrate. So what <laughs> do we have to celebrate things? We have to celebrate that 2.83, the first LTS is out. We also have to celebrate that this is the last Blender Today episode. Um, we are gonna be restructuring things. We're gonna be splitting. The, the big thing, the big picture is like we're gonna split the questions from the features. Features are gonna be only uh, little episodes of maybe a recap or a shorter per module maybe even per module based like all the cycles updates in one video or if it's a big thing just a video of that one feature sort of what we uh, i used to do during the code quest two years ago so it's not too too bad it, we are still gonna get the updates we're just not gonna get the the updates plus the questions the questions are gonna be maybe friday i have to ask you people for feedback do you think friday 5 p.m like the same time is it a good moment i was thinking of making it uh, maybe sort of like um on wednesday make a thread and then on friday pick the best 20 questions or not the best the most voted 20 questions 25 questions and then reply um on uh, live during the live stream on friday i don't know do you think it's not gonna work i think it's a good day people can be more chill and then see okay what happened this week and yeah, when, because we only talk nice about setup. questions. Yeah, so that would be that would be that would be pretty nice. All right, so we are live. We're gonna be answering questions if there is time uh, left after today's. There is a thread here made by Leo de Poix. The the po the po the po is French, right? But I don't. My French Sounds is terrible. Very French, like or maybe Canadian, French yeah. Canadian. Thank you, Leo, for. Um, or making the thread we're gonna be answering questions here towards the end of the show so thank you and well let's get started right away because there is really no uh it's just the list is so i don't know blender today 109 eevee cycles sculpt performance what else so much let's start with eevee a feature let's start the eevee let's enter the eevee section there is only one feature but it's gonna blow people's minds because it's been asked for since since eevee existed so well actually that's only one year ago <laughs> it's 2.8 um so eevee now has 
bl motion blur support so you can actually already um i don't have a uh, maybe i have a blend file that i can test here that um that you will see now here okay i did some renders with the coffee run files and so impressive yeah i i, I have here one file from the um so this is without motion blur and if i enable motion blur this file is from gabby from the one the guys from uh, settlers so we should see a little bit of motion blur but it's not too too big let's make it even more intense and um we're gonna see the effect motion blur basically the formation motion blur for reals look Something's getting lost. I think the the coffee run one is since she is actually running, it's gonna be more more obvious. But because here, because it's mainly a cheat, I don't think we're gonna see that much. Hey, anyway, Evie now has deformation motion blur, camera motion blur, hair motion blur because the commit the first commit that was added didn't include hair, so your characters will be completely bald. Not anymore. The uh, second commit that was done uh, briefly after, I think a day or two after, now uh, adds accumulation motion blur for better precision, which makes it better. And among other things, uh, it also makes it well, 32 time steps. And here, and here we see it properly. It looks so good. Yes. And this, this is the one I tested because when I was testing, the first one was already in, and this one was still in, the, in development. And there was a bug actually with uh, substance scattering. So for production files, everything would be so dark. Yeah. And then he fixed it and then committed already. It was super good. It's amazing. And it really work, Leman. Yes, it doesn't work in the viewport. You have to render it. Uh, as a fast, I know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you render. You render. So. Uh, yeah, so uh, here there is one with the... Uh... Oh, that's me reporting the bug. Yes. <laughs> so the, that it was all dark. Yeah, it's part of the discussion of the, of the patch. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, go render! Motion blur, Eevee! Just, 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 just awesome. 2.90 is even better than I was expecting. Alright, let's uh, go... Let, wanna, do you wanna continue Epic or not? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go epic. No, but then people still watching. Okay, no, no, let's let's go less epic. There is still, uh, let's move into the user interface <laughs> part of things where we uh, show new things that are gonna, you're gonna notice in the Blender UI. This little thing, it's so handy. It's a widgets for the curve widget. So you can have curve handles, like you manage the curves, but in the, uh, the curve widget. So isn't that great? It's like more control. Super nice. So thank you, Hans, for working on it. I didn't even know that it was. I just noticed today when I was going through all the commits. It's so epic. I cannot say that it's less epic than. I don't, I don't know what's happening. What, what comes next? That is just uh, that uh, it is. This is epic. If it was uh, any other week, I would be like, oh, that's insane. We have widgets for the first time inside a widget. Widget widgets. <laughs> For me, so and it's confusing. I know what it's doing, but because you see the X X going like as an S, yeah. See, that? see, and everything. It, so it, because it's not really an X Y. No, graph. no, it's not. It's something else. It's like a curve. It's a curve widget. Yeah. Super handy. So um, the other updates uh, it's. Okay, I didn't want to show epic stuff, but I am going to end up showing epic stuff. Okay, the less epic, um, it's which still a huge amount of work, is that finally the drag and drop features that we show in the past week, now they are added to other areas of Blender, such as Grease Pencil. You're going to see that now the Grease Pencil um, modifiers now can be dragged. Also, the effects can be dragged. The same for... Uh, constraints on objects and bones bones yes bones they should be added so the modifier dragging it's complete the project right bone, bone constraints 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 I think that, yeah, that was all i mean maybe still there was this idea of preventing it from being draggable horizontally but we, we can do that for panels already so there's nothing really preventing to that. it from be drag horizontally. Ah, yeah, but that's a yeah, that's because, a paper cut. Come on. No. 
This, right. it, like, uh, until recently, just for people know, it's not uh, until recently you could drag, um, you, you could have a horizontal layout like in Blender 2.4, and that was removed recently in 2.8. But did you just say until recently? <laughs> yes. <laughs> until no, until recently. What do you mean? Well, yes, I know. I, I'm I'm old. Sorry. Recently, for me, it's recently. 2.4 is around the corner. Sorry. Um, that is 2010 for all youngsters showing my age yes vincent i am showing my age sorry so okay the uh, other updates that i mentioned that it, it shows the, the the big benefits that of this new uh, layout for example the grease pencil modifiers in particular are sharing a section of the modifier that it's the same for all of the modifiers like the influent filters they have layers materials and some other um, widgets which you don't always need and it was making the modifier longer so now it's actually um, making it shorter ah, it doesn't go to the next image okay this is the next image so now it's a an actual um, sub panel that you can you can minimize and it, in many cases the whole um, UI was restructured to be more clear to be more like uh, how will you expect the, the rest of Blender to look? Um, this is very pretty nice. It follows, it is more like, look, the difference here like between multiple strokes and this. Super nice. And yeah, uh, Regarding whether or not it's final, I think it's only a matter then to have the developer signing off on the individual modifiers. Yes. You know, with the number of panels and all that. But that's that's the that's the details, and that happens on master directly. Not directly, to... yes. Also, if you have feedback, of course you can uh, provide it. It's always welcome to see. Um, but in the case of the grease pencil, I think we can trust the people behind it because it's a, a three-people team with two of them artists using it full time, and the other is a developer. So um, they they know what they're doing. <laughs> um, then uh, another change is just a just a heads up that the the extrude, the special extrude um, tool that we had that was added recently that it was, it was called um, extrude, dissolve and intersect now it's called manifold, extrude manifold so um, we, we, you're probably familiar with this one it's the one that uh, extrudes, dissolves and intersects that was the name, now it's only manifold and the last but not least section uh, not section, but feature that we're gonna find if you have um, the experimental tab showing, which is only shown when you have developer extras. So if you use Blender by default, you're not gonna notice anything different, but if you enabled developer extras, you're gonna see the little tab here, and this little tab is gonna give you a lot of fun, a lot of headaches maybe, and a lot of, um, what, mystery. This uh, maybe, section. Maybe you should have one big, you know, Word. but that says do not save production files. Do not, you know. We should add that. Be careful when you use those options because, come on. Yes. It's very hidden because for a reason. Why? Because you can find great things, but also you can find things that could break your files. So do not. Let me go full screen here. Let okay, even more full screen. Do not uh, use these features in production for the time being. Do not save files. Make a backup of your files always. Just don't, don't, don't play with it if you're not sure what you're doing because it could mess up your files. It's just testing stuff. But hey, okay, back. New features, new particle system, new hair type, undo legacy and cycles debug. So undo legacy is the old undo, which is slow and the one you hate it pretty much. Uh, it's there for developers to check if there is something broken and it's due to that undo. Just to check it. Then there is a cycles debug, which is a setting for cycles developers to debug certain specific features. Before they used to have to run Blender with some specific um, um, argument when running blender but not anymore this is this is to make it easier for them and the same with the new particle system i the other day i saw this feature it's like oh that's amazing i can actually go into object mode add point cloud i can add in i have a new editor for simulation editor and then what and then i tried to do something and i could not, i couldn't see anything that's because it's not working yet it's for developers to access those features uh 
faster. So um, Jack Luke, the creator of this feature, the, the developer of everything Notes, is working on it and he mentioned in the commit log that you are not gonna ha have much happening here. So um, you've been warned, don't get too excited. The same with the new hair type. And we do our, you know, we have a separation. Maybe the categor categories will change because this is what we have now. But you also wanted to tell uh, the difference between something that's totally prototype, might not even, might not even have documentation, like the new hair system. Especially no documentation. That is usually the last thing. Yeah, well, and then the the new Porco only for two point nine zero, maybe exactly delivered uh, like this without having it fully exposed in the UI depends on how far we get with the project. Yeah. But still it's a new feature. We're gonna have this is gonna have documentation, but the new hair is still still gonna wait a little bit more. Yes. And uh, also like if if um if we want to like have feedback via from people, maybe it could be more clear here. It's like okay, feedback wanted or something like that. Um I would rather uh, maybe maybe. I would rather maybe we reach out and say, you know like we want feedback for whatever this new particle system, how to test it, go to Blender, go to developer extra and go there. Yes. Instead of have someone that just downloaded Blender and then, oh, they want my feedback because maybe you don't want it anymore, right? If you think about the release, the 2.83, the stable one. Yeah. You know, it, the one month from now, maybe whatever was uh, being discussed is already fully implemented, so it doesn't doesn't really need feature, uh, feedback. Okay, so we are done with all the the amazing UI uh, stuff, but it's time to, you know, it is have to go like up and down. It's a roller coaster. This show is going to be a roller coaster because we went from that feature a bit lower to another thing that is going to break the internet. <laughs> Modeling. Are there any modelers out there? Everybody's a modeler. But Everyone starts as a modeler, usually, right? Everybody a... that starts, yeah, usually. I mean, you can't start... Well, you could just go to Mixamo and start doing stuff. So, this for Igaretti, Igaretl in the... Or Tommy Gun, so everybody that is in the chat. And they acknowledge themselves as a... As modelers. All right. Sit down, please, because as of a couple days ago now, Edge slide and vertex slide support snapping. Yes, let's clap, let's clap. Give it up. Emojis, stuff. That's not for Germano. Um, Germano Cavalcante has implemented this feature that people have been asking on every live stream. There is always yeah. people asking for it. I'm really glad that it finally happened because it's uh, it's yeah it's it's just gonna change people's life. I guess it's been a while that this feature has been wanted since Edge Slide was added. So oh, it's so epic the flag behind you. Ah yeah what? Well um, done. It's billowing of the wind. Oh no, I think it wrapped it up in the top, oops, and now I can't, that's not epic anymore, uh, but it's fine, it's fine. Anyway, it was beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> Sidetrack in the transform supports vertex and slide snapping. I want to see what you guys are doing with this then. Another feature, um, it's the bevel. There is a new option for modelers about bevel. Add a new absolute mode for interpreting the amount of value. So not only relative, but also absolute. This mode is like percent, but measures absolute distance along adjacent edges instead of a percentage. So for example, if you use this mode with two segments and a profile of one, you will see the length that the bevel moves along unbeveled edges between bevel ones will match the value specified. It will be so much easier with a picture. And there is a blend file here, but there is no pictures. <laughs> I want pictures. Um, anyway, it sounds pretty epic. File, right? Huh? Or a sample file. Or maybe it doesn't, maybe it has a link to the patch. Or there was no patch. Um, there is a here, there is a patch here. No, task. Some examples here in a different bug. Okay, so maybe here we can see the examples of the error. And it's a one minute long video, but it shows that relative profile is you specify the value 
it's hard for me to see this. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on. There is a task somewhere here where you can see it. Now there's another patch. What about constant radius mode? That's, a, that's another one. But so many patches actually. Ah, oh, by hands. Uh, this didn't. Didn't make it yet. But it's so did, many hearts. Yeah. Hans was planning to commit it for 2.90. Yep. But it was in the end it was still a uh, two last minute. That he still needed to polish a little bit the patch. I think the patch is by someone else. Can you whoop? Um, but the patch. No, the reviewer is Howard oh. and it's Hans. So, yeah. Okay, so it's by Hans. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so it's both of them. The dream team. The patch a little bit. It was just some comments and that cold. And uh, on on Wednesday when had the beacon two starting, it wasn't just ready. He was still going to do it, but then in the end he decided to give it a bit more time. There's no rush. There so is this, no rush. This is scheduled for two point nine one. Two point nine one. In October? Uh, no. Uh, wait. We have two point nine. June? No. no. Yeah. No. No. October. No. Bef yes. No, actually. Like yes. That. <laughs> okay, we have 2.83.2 coming out uh, in the in July, and then we have 2.90, and then we have, wow, yep, we do have 2.90. Oh, there is no project yet for that. No, not yet. But it's in the code blog, right? Here. Oh, it's, it's always three months later. Yeah, but I math, uh, bad at math. <laughs> 2.81 here. Yes, towards the end of a year. So, how's everybody? Hi, hi from France. And then a lot of uh, Portuguese, I guess, Brazilians. People asking, what's the flag? The flag is the uh, the, the Dutch. No, the, Dutch, the Amsterdam flag. Amsterdam. Yes. Amsterdam. Yep. Uh, is the file, the splash screen for 2.83 on the cloud yet? No. Um, we're still waiting for some fixes to be done. Basically, there was some... Uh, licensing issue. There were some textures that were not completely free and, and free for everybody, so uh, they need to be changed into something else so people can can use it. Uh, which is which is like a pity. That's why people should use free and free toy textures. Just just use free textures. Don't use commercial textures. Then you can do anything with your files, people. All right, more, 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 more. We were talking about snapping. So na snapping now works on um, on objects such as the lamps center. You can snap to a lamp. <laughs> so we can snap, like for example, here. So we we sna we can. How do you even do it? I don't know. I put that to the lamp to the mm -hmm. orange sheet. Sorry. I know. I can't. I can't launch Blender anymore today. So you, can, know. you can't, you broke it. So you can snap to the origin of lights and camera objects, which you couldn't do before. Um, align rotation to actual production visual. Ah, here, yes. Next, should I go with the epic or not so epic? <laughs> let's lower. Now we already talked about something a bit, a little bit epic. Let's, let's talk something halfway epic, right? Let's move into <laughs> sculpt. Slash, it's not really sculpt, it's vertex color. So this is slightly epic. It's a uh, replacement to the vertex colors that is highly under development. It's a uh, patch that uh, Pablo Darro has been working for a very long time. Um, this comes, uh, I, there are some videos where he's making this in 2.80, so last year, where basically he, um, he implemented, we go to the sculpt section, you're gonna see a new tool, two new tools actually. A new tool called Paint, doesn't have an icon yet. It's uh, basically allows you to paint. You're not gonna see anything because by default, the um, the color is set to material, but maybe it would be a good idea to set it to vertex. Maybe when you choose the, 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 the paint tool or maybe always, I don't know. And then you can see exactly what you're painting. So you can now paint in vertex. Uh, in you can paint in sculpt mode, which is weird. But the idea in the future is that this will be decoupled into its own painting mode. Am I right? Yes. Well, I don't think that's that's still to be decided. Because the vertex color itself, of course, it becomes the attribute painting mode. 
and then whether or not the sculpt vertex paint becomes a mold in its own depends on I guess on how many brushes are we planning to have what is the all feature? the brushes it's a painting brush. yeah. I think it should be a mold I think it would be easier to be a mold but I was talking to to Segi this week about you know we talked about whether these should be experimental at first or how to expose these because we don't have the icon we don't have we still have the old vertex color side by side it's super confusing yeah but maybe for now we fix this in master in this particular case in this particular case but if you ask me mm -hmm. as uh, i would have definitely put this feature in the experimental features because it's confusing now if you download blender now you're gonna start sculpting you're not gonna see the sculpt first you're gonna if you go to vertex color paint you're gonna you're gonna paint something else you still don't see it even um you don't see it because i'm painting red and then i paint here and then you have two layers you have the vertex color layers and the skull vertex color layers um until a few days ago you couldn't render this it was the feature was there but you couldn't render it so i think this is a good candidate to well now it can be fixed in master i guess the damage is done but mm -hmm. um the previous uh, like the way it should be implemented i think it should be experimental because it's very easy to enable it you just go here and then you enable it if we were added so i think we should use this uh more in uh, in practice for new features uh maybe even the modifiers layout could have been there or i don't know yeah well i agree and at least my vision is that we could, we could have Blender as something really close to a rolling release where the daily build is always, always production ready, always yeah. polished, the UI is always documented, their icons and their manual updates. So I wouldn't mind seeing the experimental panel as a, as a, as a buffer from when the developer thinks it's uh, finished to when we actually sign off by as finished. The, the community and everyone else. Yeah, yeah. The icons is a small thing, but it, it makes it look... Well, it's under development, of course. But anyway, uh, so yeah, now you have to... <laughs> you have to see how this works. Uh, in the shading side, side of things also, it's a bit weird. If you had a vertex color, you're gonna see only... In the vertex color now, you're only gonna see the sculpt vertex color. You're not gonna see the regular vertex color. For that, you need to add an attribute, and you have to like manually type the name like it was the 90s and here you're gonna see that well if you have the object and you have a vertex color this should match here but you have to type it manually so experimental mm. so know. that's why it's not so epic I, I, no, let, let's let, let's go into something really epic such as cycles performance so cycles performance especially when using motion blur has has God, have you, I don't know how many times it's just 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 crazy. Uh, some files, the file from the Asian three to seven, the fight, and the, the punching of the Asian three to seven. One of the shots where, for people that are not familiar, it's the the short film that we made some years ago, where the it's everything made in cycles, and we were seriously thinking about not using motion blur for this film at some oh. point. Right of time, I suppose. Because it was crazy. The moment you enable motion blur, it would go like just, just crazy, just, just, as in ten times more, or I don't know, just, just ridiculous. It's like, is it really worth it? So we, uh, we, yeah, we decided to basically go for it and just waste uh, and like get make the planet sick by rendering and rendering and rendering, and it was done, and it looks beautiful. However. If we were to remake this film today with the today's technology, there would be no slowdowns because a render that from that film from the Asian 327 that took 54 minutes, and that was even after the the, <laughs> the improvements that um, that Sergey did back then. Now it takes five minutes, 54 minutes to five minutes. What? You should have spit. I thought you were drinking to spit. I had I actually had just cleaned my table because I did <laughs> spill some beer here. Um, so beer, kids, it's okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's alcohol free. Yes, just just. But still, just I managed to spill it. it. So, 
54 minutes to 5 minutes. People were even asking on Twitter saying like, hey, is this, is this correct? <laughs> are, are you sure? Uh, and yes, it is correct. So it is way, way faster in most cases. There are a few corner cases where it's not. For example, the BMW, that, uh, that, that's, that file that it's so fast to render that it's almost not useful anymore. <laughs> Because it's come on, what it's, it's <laughs> where is the bottleneck for a file like that? But anyway, uh, for example, that file rendered in one minute 45, 42 seconds before, and now 48 seconds, so six seconds longer and a little bit more memory. In the cases of the barber shop, it um, it was a few seconds more and a little bit more memory, 500 megs, 400. And in other cases, it took like Victor, the character from. Cosmos Laundromat, it went from 11 and a half seconds to almost, uh, sorry, minutes to nine, almost almost nine minutes and less memory. So it's not always more memory. Actually, Koro, this one I really like because Koro has a lot of fur and fur is slow usually. So I'm glad that they managed to scrap one minute of render time on cycles and less memory, 100 megabytes less memory, which is always welcome. So super exciting this release 2.90 is gonna be night and day in terms of performance i think i think do you think you're comparing the cpu render but then i thought that the barbershop was gpu rendered or no no it was cpu no this is all for cpu by the way this is a uh, cpu render so just saying cpu you don't need an expensive gpu you don't need an expensive CPU. No, you don't need an expensive CPU. This is for every CPU, right? For every CPU, yes, but for a really more expensive. Of course, the more you have, the, the, the better it gets. If it's a CPU, it won't benefit from anything. I don't know. Let's move into another, another, another update in the performance department, the performance slash cycle slash improvements department, because the open image denoised by Intel. Remember that it was added a couple versions ago for rendering. Now it's also available in the viewport. So that is freaking epic. I should have an epic, like, let's just add a, another applause. I'm always using the applause. I'm gonna... wow. Inception. I use Inception. Oh, you're not listening. Sorry. The <laughs> added Inception noise like a bomb because this is freaking epic. Open image denoising available in the viewport for CPU. It's great. It's great. I haven't tested that one though. Should I do it live and embarrass myself? By all means. By all means. Um, I guess I'm gonna find it here. Viewport denoising. It doesn't let me choose. Ah, cycles. Uh -huh. And then um, denoising. Ah, and it has its own section now. And you can choose NLM, which means. Which means cycles non-local, native non-local means the noiser running on any compute device. This is ah, this is cycles, and then what? optics. Ah oh, no, so the other one is. Can we avoid using? <laughs> can we just say like, good, not good? At least for rendering, and this is. <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry, this was for rendering. So this is cycles denoising. Yes, actually, this is part of another feature, uh, another change that I'm planning to show, which is the uh, move from the settings that were displayed in the um, here in the view layer settings for denoising. Now these changes also are available in the render tab. That means that NLM it's cycles, cycles built in non-local. Maybe it should be called cycles NLM. Uh, because NLM is just, I don't know, not a big fan of those uh, short. Maybe it's nice to clarify that the open image the noise is, uh, is Intel. Some people are wondering if it's Intel. A, not, <laughs> Intel. Intel. So great so, working. Yes, for the rendering, you have cycles built in and then optics. But then you also have viewport. You have a viewport, you have uh, fast as the optics. <laughs> optics. Where's, where's <laughs> the one that is fastest? I, I'm always gonna click on fastest, and then optics, <laughs> and then open image denoise, which we know. Uh, we need to do a pass in here. I think. 
Well, good thing we now have time because because we have. You're what? gonna be you're gonna be left and right helping the UI team. If, yes, that's well, part of my new job. I have a new job at Blender. I didn't people sign a contract people, yet. Uh, did probably get fired for wondering on that. Ah, people were wondering. No, no, I didn't get fired. I um, I just rearranged. I'm gonna be doing the same things that I'm doing now, but more organized, I guess. Um, the, the title is Head of Design and Communication. And the design part is covering both the design, the brand, the Blender and the stuff, but also the uh, and the cloud and the Blender project, but also the Blender UI uh, helping out with that. And on that for I'm, I'm getting two days a week to work on that. And then uh, communication is this. So I'm also making this part of my regular job. The same thing I'm doing basically, but with another name and more responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Um, all right. Next, uh, site tracking. Gee. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a few other changes that are worth mentioning for cycles. So you're not going to see. Uh, so, OK, there is um, um, a change. You're not going to see the back face culling option for curves anymore. It's been removed. It's uh, mainly because the hair BSDF always assumes that you have it. So it could lead to issues. So now it's always there, basically. No need to... well, it, it, you're not going to find it anymore, so all the files are going to work fine. And it's um, it, it's less settings. Yay, I'm glad with less settings. Remove support for rendering hair as triangle and lines. This is another setting that changed in, uh, in cycles. It's uh, removing the support. The triangles were very memory intensive. The only reason they were not removed yet is that they gave more accurate results. But there will be an accurate 3D core primitive for this, which is uh, um, it was added after this commit, which I can actually show here. Uh, line rendering was always poor quality since the end doesn't not match. To keep CPU and GPU compatibility, we just remove them entirely. They could be brought back if an Embry compatible implementation is added. Yep, um, that's a nice reminder for um, that when adding features to cycles, it's uh, there is like a lot of overhead in the case of adding it to CPU, GPU, uh, CUDA, optics, um, um, oh, uh, open changing language, OpenCL for AMD graphics cards or Intel graphics cards. Um, there is a primitive, new primitive. So there is a change in the primitives that were available. Now there is rounded ribbon. Render hair as a flat ribbon with fake rounded normals, which is the fastest, fastest rendering. And hair, oops, I press the back button. Hair curves are subdivided with a fixed number of user specified subdivisions. Good results, but yeah, it's not an actual hair. For that, you're gonna use the 3D curve primitive for hair for accurate results with uh, viewing hair close up. And also, I don't know, I, I find that the 3D curve, since it's an actual geometry, you can light it from the back and it gives a nice uh, rim light around it. All right, that is all for uh, for cycles. I think I'm done with cycles part. What's uh, writing there? Uh, I remember I just had a great idea to because right. we have those remote uh, controllers to turn off the lights in the office. Yes. But if Brack turns on the lights on his office, they turn on the lights here. And the same for the main building one. That's and a if I want... So how do I do it? And I realize I can just remove the lights here in the office. Just so that's remove lights. Hope. Remove lights. <laughs> remove lights. I'm going to, yeah, not light, not blender lights. <laughs> because if you write that, people are going to look what? <laughs> No more lights. No, it's just HDR, everything. Use the sky. The sky texture is for everything. All right, uh, let's let's uh, move topics. Chris Pencil. Chris Pencil now has a new parameter for anti-aliasing in the pixel effects. So the, um, the pixel effects, which is um, usually used for yeah, for like 2D effects. You can also just add some anti-aliasing for it in case you need it. Uh, it's, a, it's just the one setting that you turn on and off in the modifier itself. Is this screen base or so if it's the screen base, yes. moves, I... the pixels move with it or it's like a grid, pixelated grid on the screen? I can tell you right now, but a fike, as far as I know, all the effects in here in Grease Pencil are screen-based. So for example, if I make this 
I'm not even seeing it. Are you th looking to, through the camera, maybe? Oops. Yep. Uh, no, actually, I don't see it. All right. Uh, bug report. Render. I need to be rendered. Sorry, I need to be in render mode. It could say. It could warn me about it. So, okay, mm -hmm. you can, you can also see it here. I'm going to disable the lights. In here, it's still dark as heck. Um, but the anti-aliasing, if I move around... No, it's actually... Yeah, if you move it... Yes, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's not uh, screen dependent, you see? If I zoom in and out, it's always the same. But if you, move, if you move sideways, it doesn't change, but only if you rotate, technically, right? Not the, the object itself. Ah. If, if you move the object if you, side. Ah, yeah, exactly. If you move it X... No, there is some change. Interesting. So my, I mean, just, like, if you mix two different objects, maybe they have the, they're pixelated, but the pixels are not on the same pixel grid. Yes. I guess you are a developer, you know this kind of stuff. I know what I mean, right? But it, yeah, yeah. Looks pretty cool, though. That's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I, I want uh, I want these effects of everything for objects too, for meshes. All right, changing topics. <laughs> Fluids. Fluid simulation. The Manta Flow developer Sebas has added improved OpenVDV support for fluid caches. So OpenVDV support is so good now that it's default. When you add a, when you make a new, um, when you cache any new simulation, it's gonna cache as OpenVDV, which is fast and it's uh, good and it's nice and it works and it's compatible with other softwares and it's just the best thing since sliced bread. Why do people say sliced bread? So it's not that great, sliced bread. Uh, we had sliced bread today in the studio. Yeah, it's great. Well, you, you can know, slice you it yourself. One. Sliced bread is great. I would say, yeah, okay, sliced bread. It's the best thing since there are, be there are better things than sliced bread. Like underwear. <laughs> T-shirts, jeans, jeans. Who can argue with that? Experimental, there is new features <laughs> that I mentioned in the experimental section, but the other big, big, big section of today is that there are improvements. It's not the big, it's, it, it's tiny steps that make it big it's performance it's performance people say you can't eat it underwear not with that attitude <laughs> let's go into the performance section because there has been many many little performance improvements that stack up and make it blender 2.90 the best uh, the the most performant release ever such as Editing meshes, edit edit mode. It's always it's uh, one of the things that people complain a lot. It's one of the projects for this year to make it faster. This commit is one of um, many of those steps towards a fast edit mode. This one gives you around five percent speed up on high poly meshes. Right. That's good. That's good. No, I was just thinking. It's pretty good. <laughs> it, yeah, it's pretty good. It, these developer guys are great. <laughs> Minor optimization. Five percent is a lot if you like stack up, uh, and I, I'm so happy that performance is now uh, this is type top priority, and we see so many improvements in in performance, and we're gonna see even more, I guess, once Vulkan is there and in the terms of the viewport, hopefully. Another performance improvement. This is also a very small one, but it adds. The draw playhead as an overlay. Playhead is the current frame that the indicator now is drawn as an overlay, which it spits up some files such as the Spring Open Movie file that went from 11.8 frames per second to 12.5 frames per second. That's almost one frame per second. Added to the last week's one frame per second, two frames per second. Hey. You, do, you sound very excited. Uh, it, it is, and then I mean every one of those. No, I, I commit from from the one kind of falling closely, and it's one FPS only. But then last week you did had another one, which another, is another, another one FPS, and another FPS, and another FPS. And if every week we get one FPS after a month, we have one whole second speed up. 
<laughs> right? So the um, draw play headers on overlay is fantastic. There is another, um, this we're not gonna see that much of an improvement, but it helps, is the UI, the widgets themselves. This Clement made it. So the widgets, believe it or not, they're very heavy. They used to be very heavy. There was over 600 verts, vertices for the, for the widgets. What you see there is geometry. Now there is a batch, so instead of six, uh, 600, now there is 16 verts for the, for the average batch of widgets. Uh, so that makes the files, if we can probably take a look at the, the shader itself. It's gonna get so much harder to, to maintain oh, the, the, the data, the geometry, or whatnot. Now it's all in the shader, and it's usually like one shader for every single widget we have in Blender. Yep. It's good. Yeah, it's a, it's it's fast. <laughs> it's it's fast and it's uh, modern. Look at all this code just for round box, triangle, scroll, and yeah. Now it's uh, much faster. Is this GLSL or is just? It is GLSL. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Fragment shader, fragment shader is fragment GLSL. Shaders. All right, but he's not only the one. So Jerun, Clement, and now Julian, Julian Eisel. He is been working on a lot of improvements for the outliner drawing. So this one, for example, avoid re rebuilding the outliner tree, so like redrawing the whole thing and the whole outliner uh, when changing the area size. So if you're scaling the outliner, it's not gonna, it's gonna be faster now because it doesn't have to redraw all the time. Did you see him demo it? Uh, no. The, he was demo with some of the production files here from the animation studio. Oh. And that's why he got to do that because it was so slow, so slow. We Just want videos. Eyes in the outliner. We want videos, please, for people outside the studio. I'm gonna be at the studio next week and I'm gonna be recording everything. There we go. I'm just gonna. Well, not everything. I'm still gonna be making these videos at home. I don't wanna share my microphone with people yet. <laughs> I'm a bit paranoid, but okay. Um, so the um, outliner, when you resize the window, it's gonna be faster. Next. Don't rebuild outliner when leaving the area. So if you move the mouse around the outliner and you left the outliner, there will be another redraw, which can be very slow, especially when working with larger files. When big files, it you could tell a lag when moving from a uh, from outliner to the other. It's not a it's not a, it's not a redraw, but it's a rebuild. So we build the whole uh, outliner tree. No, what? So if you have a, a gazillion files. Yeah. Uh, objects, it will it over every object in the scene, every collection, every material, every data block. So the rebuilding is a uh, can take time. Yes, it can take time. It uh, it adds up, but that's not only then because Julian kept at it and it made it so when you are opening or collapsing collapsing items, also not uh, doesn't have to redraw the whole thing, which is isn't necessarily in most cases. So we avoid it where possible right now. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? That's why it's good to have experienced developers working in this kind of... Uh, like who it from the outside community would like to look into these things? This, this, is, this is the kind of things that people... I mean, we do have a, the, a Google Summer of Code project also related to that liner. So I think it's, it helps even for the... In case for Nate, for the student, Nate, Nate Craddock. Yeah. Nate, oh Nate, Nate, he's, he's the one that added all the improvements on the outliner and he recently had, just a spoiler alert, collections colors in the outliner. Mine. I didn't that. <laughs> you didn't know? I saw no. the commit today and I was like, I, cannot, I should tell you the blender today, but no, because it's a spoiler and it's not there in master yet, it's in a branch, so uh, don't get too excited yet. Well, yeah, get excited. He made it the last open uh, Google Summit of Code. He made it through, so. Um, then the library overrides. There is um, um, updates and performance also. Now, when you, for example, save a blend file, uh, I don't have the commit for this one, but when you save a blend file or when you are editing several override objects at the same time with multi-editing, it should be several times faster now. Basically, is the instead of doing all uh, one step by step, it's parallelize, parallelize, so in parallel. Super neat. And cache file properties can also be overridable now. 
Next, uh, irons. Uh, okay, switching topics. Irons in the the sun position. Iron. The new um, settings in the sky texture are displayed as well, such as texture, uh, such as the sky elevation and the rotation properties. And the last section, top three, is. Alembic and Colada importers. When you import stuff in Alembic, for example, now you can undo. <laughs> Before you couldn't. <laughs> Isn't that a great thing? Undo it's supported. Then in the in the text um, editor, in the text editor, you can have now uh, the replace all operator, which is a uh, patch by Paul Pater, Valentin. So thank you, Valentin, for contributing. You can replace all the settings all the occurrences then uh, iron developers hello iron developers if you use if you copy constraints a lot now there is a python method to do it um, before there wasn't there was uh, an operator in the ui but now you have the copy method speaking of python api now you can also uh, the the bpy props enums property also now support integers defaults um, which wasn't is must match the specified specify number of enum in, in items and is supported for both static and dynamic enums. Previously, dynamic enums did not support the default value at all, so now you can have default values. Another great uh, news for add-on developers. And the last but not least is a shout out to Tobias Heinke for overhauling the introduction to API documentation. The uh, updated for 2.8 changes, renamed the screen to workspace, and update terminology, spelling, and formatting. Thank you. You're doing uh, uh, the work that people, like you don't notice until you really need it. It's like, why is it old? Anyway, that is all for the updates. 52 oh, minutes. Can I uh, add to that? So we, every time we release Blender, we update the list of contributors of all time, contributors and the latest release. Just script that we run so you can find on the Blender web page. If yes. you go to about credits. About and credits. And was counting today because of the for reasons. So we had a hundred over like we had a hundred four contributors for two point eighty three. A hundred and four. 104. We have Blendify, Alessio Monti, yes, he made a bunch of... Antonio Vasquez, two commits. Yeah, one of them was like the refactor of Gris Pencil. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, no, because he has two accounts, apparently. This is the one, this is the correct one. Um, but yeah, he, he has... Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the, the patch is probably maybe... Uh, needs needs some tweaking. Hermano, fifty four comment like Gaia and all the guy. The mate. Your mom also had two accounts. Feel for Manu, you might find him again. Hermano, oh okay. Yeah, oh, Manu, no, we for example his his name. Pablo Barro, Pablo Vasquez made one commit. I think uh -huh. I just did it just just like typo. Oh, Patrick, Patrick Moore is there as well. Yeah, Nvidia. Well, everybody. Ray, well, Ray, Mr. Dodo. Um. I see Mano is there, as I said. And William Reinish. Who is Blender, I think? There is someone called Blender. Blender <laughs> is committing himself. All right, uh, let's uh, go to the questions because there is really, uh, we, 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 we just, just features this, this. It's one hour already, yeah? I know, I know. All right, 22 comments. Let's go through the most voted ones. First question, let's switch to the question mode. Will Blender get a version launcher? That's a new fit, new ask. Uh, question of the century. Everybody's asking for this. Are we gonna get a launcher? I don't know. We might get a, a notification to know that there's a new updated Blender. Yep. Launcher itself, like a hub where you can choose which Blender to pick. It's in no one's agenda, but everyone can contribute with that, I suppose. Um, I would like a, like downloading. At least checking if there is a new that that should be easy to do it. Yeah, but launcher, usually people mean like the little hub where you can pick, okay, which versions we have in our computer, and then which one do you want to open this project with? And then you open this project, oh, it's no. tied to a Blender version. No, no, no. Well, not that I, would, I wouldn't. I would So that's a... Yeah, that's a launcher. No, I don't. I don't. I just want a little <laughs> thingy that says, hey, there is a new Blender version. And then every three months you can click and you get it. Yeah. So next question. Next question. 
Uh, Pablo, yes. There's a big part of the architecture visualization community yep. wanting to move to Blender. However, there's a lack of small things like better and simpler tone mapping, tree planner mapping. I thought we had tree planner mapping. I thought so. Yeah. And guessing vertical tilt, etc. Implementing those features in tutorials about this specific part of CG would bring thousands of people to Blender. That was not a question. That's a comment. Uh, that's a comment. It's a uh, it like yeah there the, I think we are very aware <laughs> of that as in Blender Foundation is very very aware of that. It's just that there are so many so many areas right. If you write this and then suddenly there was all the focus in architecture visualization, the game people were like, hey, what is, what, what's happening with the game people? And then the sculpt people would be the same and then the video editors say hey, where is the video sequence they're not getting low and then just <laughs> piles up so mm -hmm. for that my answer is join the blender development fund and make help making this a fruitful pro hey it was ninety four thousand a few days ago last week now it's ninety two thousand oh we got the yeah well that happens like the problem you see that that that's that's what happens when one big bigish sponsor drops the number goes down a lot so it really helps that the community this part here this blue part is the individual uh, members of the community so let's make this grow people it's five euro per month it's like two one one starbucks coffee per month um let's uh, continue so i'm gonna leave this in the chat so everybody feels the love Next, um, second well, item. Sorry. Are we do the four questions. Sure. No, let's okay. let's just do both. Uh, let's bounce it. So this one in EV and viewport module, there is viewport compositor on the roadmap. Is there any info? What would it be? Compositor effects render directly in viewport, also with cycles. Yes, I think. But part of that is to do maybe the different nodes for that nodes that could run in real time, just as EV does. So using the LSL. So might be a subset of the compositor, might be just a compositor running in the viewport on top of the viewport data. So as real time as the compositor, still to be determined. As you can see there, it's only planning to start around 291, yeah. almost two. So yeah, it's a, it's a big big project, big project, but it's gonna blow people's minds, including myself. I'm waiting for it. So, what's the third question, Dalai? The third question is, is there a chance for optics completeness for 2.90, especially with support for bevel and ambient occlusion shader? I don't know. I, I wasn't even aware it was not... Uh, no, shipping. yeah, it's not. It's one of the big things why it's not working at the moment. But uh, Patrick, the developer from NVIDIA that is working on it, he committed recently a fix, not fix, slash change that makes it so uh, when those are not available for optics, he would use CUDA when, when possible. So it says like a, you can do the noising with optics and the rest do it with CUDA. So you have both. I don't know how it's shown in the Blender UI, but okay. Next question. Has Brecht any plans for implementing caustics in Cycles' wink face? Why the wink face? I don't think plans. I don't think so. <laughs> I wink the wink face. <laughs> I mean, I'm making the wink face. I, I, don't, I never understand wink faces. Uh, it's, like, hey. it's like, any caustics? Yeah, but you could add to anything. Hey, Pablo, and then Geek. Anyway, uh, are there any plans? No, I don't think so. I, d I don't think so. I would much, much rather, if I had like a top list of features, it would be light linking for cycles. Uh, top of my priority, personal priority list that, li list that no one knows about. Next uh, question. Do you want to do it? Yes, Pablo and the light. Amazing show. Thank oh, you. Thank you. It's the last one, so enjoy. <laughs> Recently, I found an amazing add-on which is in development, which makes collaboration uh, possible by like multiple users working with the same Blender, I presume. I was wondering if there are any plans to implement something similar in future releases. And the answer is kind of. Kind of? Wait, I mean, what do you mean? Well, at the moment we support USD more deeply into Blender at some point in the future, we could start benefiting from things like the Omniverse, 
which is a collaboration tool exactly for multiple people working in different uh, DCCs, such as yeah. Blender. So, that's it. it. This should be a feature that is done externally. I don't think the Blender Foundation should invest. No, no but externally, but I mean, you know, comes with uh, being part of the USD ecosystem. Yeah. The thing okay. is, uh, why not? Is uh, it's just it's just so prone to errors. If you, uh, what happens if I load, if I add a picture that is it has fifty four K images and then you are in render mode? Am I <laughs> sorry? Uh, there are so many corner cases that could blow up and uh, another mesh, a texture. If I'm running physics and you're and you are in, you do you see my fix? I don't know. Just so many, so many things that can go wrong. Um, it's still fun though, but it shouldn't be a, uh, I don't know. Blender Defender asks, Hey Pablo, hi, thank you for the code dives. This, uh, we, we plan to continue with this eventually. Now that the Corona situation is going away, at least in the Netherlands, uh, at least we could go back to normal and do this more often. Um, thank you for the code dives and the video on how to build the source code. But is it possible to make tutorials on what, which code files are doing and changing them without breaking the code <laughs> As, yeah because we show it but I think we show how to break the code um, <laughs> we we could do something like that what it, what would we I think you're changing the code is breaking the code I think that could be a, a fun episode of diving into the code just hacking things just so you can still build blender but you're just messing things up like the copy location constraint actually you know just makes everything just uh, like in the origin of the scene or changing the UI. UI is silly because it's easier to do, but you know what I mean? Just really disruptive coding, but without uh, it's still compiling Blender. Still still compiling Blender and uh, not breaking files. <laughs> and the next question. Pablo, will Node Wrangler ever be enabled by default? Yes and no. I, well, actually there's no real plans for it, but I believe that we should pick the best settings, the best uh, tools from the Node Wrangler, add them to Blender default, and then keep the Node Wrangler for more experimental features that are um, more maybe disruptive. Um, the Node Wrangler has great things such as the principal shader, building the principal shader connections, uh, the viewer, the uh, um, replace node that I use it every day. Uh, but some other features may be experimental. So yeah, I think uh, we should bring some other features on. The next question for Dalai, where can I share my theme? There is a call for content, but what is the best place? Oh, that's a question for you because you put the <laughs> call for content. I know. I, you know. So um, I have two answers. So the <laughs> list of themes that is currently in Blender is gonna stay like that. I don't think we're gonna be adding more, more themes for the time being because it's time consuming every time there is a new setting added in any theme it all the other themes have to be updated and that's taking time from the developers and i don't think we lender developers should be spending time updating themes however we have a website called blender.community which you see it here and i i would like for blender community to host themes the same way you can host builds blender builds it's even easier and faster to just hold, host a little, you know, um, XML file. So I would like to to work on that eventually. That's another thing I would like to do in uh, Blender Animation Studio. Blender is no Blender Foundation. Blender Institute. I'm now working for the Blender Institute. That's a change. I used to work for the Animation Studio, which is the same. It's just another floor. Blender. We work for Blender. Yes, it's true. We work for Blender. Blender is. Blender is love, Blender is life. Next question. Hi guys. Oh well, uh, regarding the community, it, there is a um, um, Blender.community upgrade to a whole new system we're being worked on, but it's gonna be many months from now, or Why? at least a few months from now. Oh, I get a different list of questions, but I guess because they have been liked, I don't know. Sorry. Anyways. Ah, uh, the, the next question I see here is different than the one you see. I see oh, the one because we, we loaded at the separate time. Uh -huh. So, um, what do you want to read? Uh, uh, it's just like... Oh, let's read let's refresh now. From Elias. 
Let's Pablo, Pablo yes. is being able to override properties like location and role for added bonds. Is an overridden armature planned? I guess I messed up the sentence a little bit, but you did, yes. Is a library override uh, planned to support also added bonds, rotation, and location? I can't you do that now? It's an action. You just make the proxy. You could maybe not as an uh, maybe not for the edit bone, only for the post bone. Ah, no, 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 for edit bone, edit bones. Ah, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I would like to think so because it's a data block, so we could do. Right. And there's a whole explanation why <clears throat> Elias would want to do that, but honestly. So it'd be possible to have a base rig that gets linked and then modified to fit differently shapes and meshes. Yeah, uh, they are the other. I would, I would, um, I mean, yeah, it could be, but I currently edit to link bones is prone to crashing. I, I would uh, suggest to do something else, like build a rig system that you're and like a rigify and then apply Rigify modules. Rigify modules are very powerful and there is a tutorial coming up, many tutorials, training, coming to the Blender Cloud for rigging. That's why I want to keep doing it here because actually the microphone that I use at the studio is now being used for making training. But it's worth it, you know, because there is a new rigging tutorial training coming to the Blender Cloud for the first time since Humane rigging in 2.4 era 5. The next question, which is the one that I actually see here in the live stream, is uh, Hi guys, a similar one to this Houdini feature would be great. Um, enable physics with transformation tools, and uh, they switch could be in the snapping menu or a separate button next to that. I see it here as well. So there's only one question you are missing. It's okay. Yeah. Ah, okay, so it's enabling. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like the cloth brush from Pablo Navarro, so I wouldn't be surprised if Pablo added it to eventually as a tool. Um, I'm, I don't know. For me, it look it looks more like the the Don's vision for the interactive mode. Looks pretty cool. Yep, it looks pretty cool. I'm not sure if it's being implanted yet. Uh, the question is for you. What do you say? When can we expect more nodes to be added in the material section for procedural texturing? Do you want to be added the material section to procedural texture? More nodes. Have you seen all the nodes that were added for 2.82 and 83? I think it follows from the... What's his name? Bas... Basio... Basio... What? Who added? I think I remember. Who added uh, what? The new nodes for 2.83. Doesn't matter, it's about the feature, not the people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's the other way around. It's all about the people. 2.83 has seen lots of improvements in nodes, updated shader nodes, vector rotate. Um, I don't know, I think it should be at this point with all the nodes that there are planned. I think it maybe would be more specific about the, um, about the, the nodes that you're expecting from procedural texturing. Uh, such so as? What's, the point of, what's the point of the node? Yeah, exactly. Like, what, what are you exactly missing? So maybe it's better to see it. I agree. agree. see what's what's missing. Um, the next, well, you can ask it. Oh, well, next one is by, because uh, I have a different order here. Like, let's refresh the page now and let's go to okay, the, one, two, two, three, go. go. Okay, so we, we go to the first one that is not, um, Black. Yeah, Felipe del Rio. Hey. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I was seeing for. So, hi Pablo, hi the like. Greetings from Brazil. Hola, Felipe. How are you doing? I've been following the Blender development and wondered why Light Links is not one of the priorities for Cyclops. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Is there, isn't there any chance we can see this feature being implemented in the next releases? It'd be, you know, be great. I'm expecting this a lot. Congratulations on the episode looking forward for the new show thank you felipe so the um well you probably know well i don't know why it's not a high top right where are they there used to be a page where you will see all the lists where all the features where is that in the work board the work board now okay and then in the work board i'm gonna see the actual the long term 
you can see the long term panel. Yes. Uh, long term. There? there is no long term here. Uh, Brecht is a. Uh, goes rogue. He doesn't like the. to follow the other modules. Uh, Anyways, you can find the feature there. Light linking here. It's in the cycles feature, which is better than long term. Um, support to have a light influence, yeah, only on a few objects. Um, this feature, I think everybody wants it. I don't think it has a long term or short term priority, not short term for sure. Um, I think the focus right now is in performance. I'm going to change the backlog as well. Yes, and I mean, technically, every single thing you see that's not in the 2.0 is in this big long term agenda. Uh, we do have the many lights, it's kind of related to the lighting, but I don't know. I never, I mean, Rekt has his own agenda. Whenever he gets us to, to develop cycles, I don't even see him bring it up. Uh, no. Light groups, it's probably, it, which means it's probably too hard to do. Probably it's really hard to do because I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna break the log here, but I'm gonna add a, a, a love icon because I, I, <laughs> this is like the thing that I miss. Even Blender internal had it. So I'm gonna add my love to that. All right, uh, let's. See, what do you think about doing formal questions? And we wrap it up. Yes, let's let's do it. All right. So this one, it's uh, hi Pablo. Last week I asked if quadrangulation algorithm library could be implemented in Blender, and you said you would show one of the developers. What the developers said? I, mm. uh, I got ah, silent. <laughs> I did not. I am sorry. I failed you. I have not done it. It was a strange week. I got a new job. <laughs> Blender 2.83.1 came out. I went to the studio many times during the week. And um, that uh, many meetings. Today there was also a meeting. I went to have a meeting about the Blender Cloud and the Blender and the sequencer and many things. Anyway. What was the what was the quadrangular? Quadrangulation algorithm for it's an, it's an algorithm for um, for better quads in your mesh. And there is a patch and there is a library, but I forgot to show it. We could see actually if you if you go if you go to the previous Blender today, you're gonna see. Um, oh, the, the previous Blender today. Uh, Blender, I think it's Blender today. Here, New Sky, and then I'm gonna see here. And uh, quad here, auto remeasure. It's a uh, here the library over here. Um, so this is this is what it is. Auto remeasure. I'm gonna send it to you, or you can you can see it. It's called auto remeasure. I found. I just found the blah blah, blah auto remeasure. Found it. Okay. Maybe it's good for Sebastian Parvog to also look at it. I can tell him right now. Yeah. <laughs> Or if he is watching, I could. Uh, what's the license? Just look at the license here. Ah, uh, it's a uh, good, I think. GPL3. Yeah. It's um, GPL3? Mm -hmm. Perfect. But then uh, my question is, this is not to replace. No, it's, re it's a new kind of remeasure. It's not for QuadriFlow to re be replaced, but I think it's a whole new. Uh, right? Yeah, seem to be. I mean, but don't we have the OpenVDB already for this? No, but OpenVDB is based on volumes. This is not based on volumes, right? This is based on geometry and loops and stuff. Would be great if we would say something about it. Okay. Ah, here, From blog. End of the next questions. I'm gonna Thank drag Barbody. Do you wanna do it live? Because you didn't ask him last yeah, week. Yeah, let's do it live. It's the last live stream. Come on. Hello. Sebastian Parv, he's bringing the guy that implemented QuadriFlow live in the show here for you from Amsterdam, from the Blender Animation Studio. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What up? How are you? Hi. So good. Uh, I'm good. Just got nabbed, so. <laughs> good. I have no clue what this is about. Have you heard of the auto remeasure that was published like a few days ago? No, <laughs> it seems to be a library that is GPL, so it's it's, uh, it's good, and it's an automatic quadri meshing tool and will be integrated to Dust 3D once it's acceptable performance. But apparently, it gives you a whole lot of uh, 
more like you can see you can compare here open vdb volume base quadri flow and then the auto remeasure keeps better track of the loops and the poles and stuff um no not yeah. bad yeah i mean the issue with quadri flow right now is basically if we have certain meshes it just doesn't know what to do with them and produces really really bad results oh uh, which is not good obviously so yeah i really have to look into this uh to see if this is better because then we can just use this i guess yeah and it's nice that they acknowledge the quadri flow is another nice option the quality of the generated quads is slightly better than instant meshes sometimes but not always so is it like the way the the, the these systems are added now the remeasures is it possible to just like add a new library and on like you could choose between quadri flow um auto remeasure yeah absolutely uh the it's basically just that we uh, have a API to give the remesher a mesh from Blender and then it does its thing and we get the mesh result back and we convert that data back into Blender mesh data and add it to the object. So it is compatible? Uh, I, I would guess so because if you can in the example here it says you uh, give it a OBJ file and you get back OBJ file then we can use the data because obviously they have something that writes to OBJ and if that's the case we can just use that to uh, not write to a file but use this file structure to get the Blender mesh. I'm gonna send you the link. Sounds pretty yeah, good, all right. Do it because so uh, yeah, I've, I've been looking for ways to improve quality flow but it's it's really hard to do, uh, so I would have needed a lot of time to do it. But if this already does it for me, then awesome. I don't yes. need to do a job. I can just take the library and, and do it. It's, it's very young. It's like nine days ago that it was the license was published. So, uh, hey, we can even maybe the, the, the developer is uh, excited about this being implemented in Blender. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because uh, we we just did some uh, Prenel. Uh, preliminary testing for quadri flow and those test files worked really good but then when there were more widespread testing from the community we noticed oh there's a lot of issues here in some specific cases that crops up kind of often uh, sadly um oh, awesome. so yeah well really Thank you for bringing me here to discuss this. Yeah, I no, guess. thank no, you. Like thank you for <laughs> dropping by and thank you to uh, 14 Arian Nudin for um, for proposing this uh, in the last live stream and I forgot to mention it, but I we did now. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. Make me later and I'll, I'll take a look at it. See you, see you next week. <laughs> see you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> There, I added the sound when you come out of the pipe. Uh, so, uh, is it that great? This makes it even feel more like a live stream. Uh, all right, so um, we were in question. I don't know. Let's do four more. Mm -hmm. Facundo de la Rosa. Hi, Pablo. How are you doing? Hope you're okay. Greetings from Argentina, my homeland. Here's my question. I don't understand why the new Vertex Paint tools are in sculpt mode when there is a dedicated Vertex Paint mode. Why is that? Will this mode be removed? Uh, if, I don't also don't understand. It's uh, main, The main thing is performance. A sculpt mode is faster um, and it's also kind of handy to sculpt and paint at the same time. However, the vertex paint mode needs so many more tools that are dedicated to vertex paint and they will pollute the sculpt mode i believe so it's good to have them separate and maybe think of a more generic way of combining modes so you could even sculpt and wait paint at the same time um, eventually the modes are going to be split off in an attribute painting mode which is not only painting color but also painting weight and painting particle influence or density or whatever you want attributes basically but that's in the plans for after 2.90 during 2.90 and after am i right yes might even be for uh, in first point nine two point ninety already because we plan to tackle some of this but you see it's confusing yeah. people so this should be experimental 
I know, I know, I know. We talked about that. I I'm agree. suddenly confusing Argentinians. <laughs> One more question. Do you know if animation nodes will be integrated in Blender natively? No. Animation, no. No. Um, no. Animation nodes is an add-on. It has its own, like... It could. It could be shipped with Blender. Why not? Because it's huge. It's like 50 megabytes. So I can't? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, huge 50 megabytes is like not a huge, but it's pretty big. So, um, no, it's not. It's a separate uh, concept. Uh, many of the features that we're seeing now with blend with the animation, with the notes, the, the new system for notes in Blender could be replicated eventually using animation notes, but um, like using animation notes concept, like move this object, animate the value of whatever, uh, but they're separate, like maybe this in five years or so. Number three. Do you see it? No, I can I can do it for you. Not no, sure. I don't see anything more. Close a bunch of stuff. Do you know if full cycles optic support is a Blender developer problem or an Nvidia dev problem? Full cycles optics support. I think it's an Nvidia dev. Uh, no, it's not a problem. It's like. Um, <laughs> I mean, NVIDIA has its own developer working on optic support in Blender. It's not a Blender Foundation sponsored project. It's NVIDIA doing their thing. So they, I don't know if it's something in the cycle side that has to be implemented or in, I don't know, for OpenCL, for example, if it would work in OpenCL, then it should, not sure. I don't know, but uh, I mean, it probably mentioned, we talked earlier, right? The missing bits from optics. Yes. I'd say it's NVIDIA. No, oh, it's it's a common problem to be worked together. It's a theme. It's a theme. So that was three. Number two. Why the last one? <laughs> uh, okay. No, the the next one is when will the north section be updated? Uh, no plans for that. Really, never seen. And the last one is uh, why is the last episode of Blender today? I already kind of mentioned at the beginning. Um, the I so okay. Starting July 1st, I'm gonna be back at the Blender Studio. I'm gonna go back to the office. I'm not gonna be at home anymore, except maybe for making videos because I have my own microphone, my own mixer, my screen. Does the cadence go up again in the Netherlands? Uh, well, if we all start, well, they, they plan to open. Um, Okay, the Blender features are over. The questions are over. Now this is another section of the of the live stream. If you want to drop it, go and do something more interesting. But okay, I don't think the it's gonna. Yeah, maybe it's gonna jump again. They, they, they expect it in September to go back in the second wave in the in not only in the Netherlands but in everywhere in in Europe. So I don't know. The regarding the show, I plan to over all these years of making Blender today. I we kind of see a trend that the features are sometimes way too long to be covered in the questions section and uh, sorry on the live stream and then the question section ends up being very short we don't have enough time to answer all of these questions and we can't even answer them sometimes properly because I, I sometimes I have to do it on my own because developers are busy and I don't have answers for everything so the um, the idea is to split blender today in two i'm already doing the blender recaps blender today recaps which is an edited video where i go through all of the features added in that week or two weeks and just making a 10 minute video this it's uh, fun and it's what fun to watch and fun to make but you're are you playing the, <laughs> the <laughs> elevator <laughs> trick it's like I was moving the table back to the sitting position. <laughs> serious, please. I'm talking about something serious here. It's so the last, the end of an era. So the um, the the update, the Blender updates part of section of of uh, Blender today is gonna be um, more in like smaller videos, shorter videos of features, feature based. Um, the same way I do the recaps, but maybe even instead of having a recap with all of the features, maybe doing okay, there is new. Uh, new cycles re optimizations okay do one video of that three minutes two minutes and then just talk about it show it done and then another video for ev motion blur one video ev motion blur done so i think it's been gonna be better for everybody <laughs> 
Uh, for me, it's gonna be faster to make it because I don't have to explain 30 features in one minute. Just one feature per video. It's similar to what I was doing during the code quest. Uh, if you don't remember, uh, you're gonna have to dig into the old videos of the Blender developers YouTube channel. The ones that are all blue and maybe I have... Uh, yeah, here, exactly. So there was like one feature here, for example. Now you can hide the visibility of collections. Yay! <laughs> Before you couldn't do it. So it was a one video, six minutes, showing that feature. Maybe I could focus on that. Um, it's They are so short that I could even make many in one day and then showing them uh, later. So I think this worked fine. They have around the same amount of views that the current videos have, 16, 15k, so... But anyway, that would leave me with the uh, other section, the big section of the show, which is focus on questions. For that, I think it would be a good idea. I don't know what you guys think in the chat or what do you think, Dalai, to maybe have on Wednesday, make the, the thread on Blender today for people to ask questions. And then on Friday, 5 p.m., I answer the top 20 questions. I think they can see. They can try, right? Try and see how to help people respond to that. Because if on Thursday I see that okay, all the questions are related to cycles, then okay, Brecht, please can you be on the show and then she ask the questions with him? Um, I could make it easier to invite people. Or you could make the, uh, or you could really do the questions only live. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, the questions only live. No, that's not fair for people in in different uh, different time zones. If, yeah, yeah, if whatever sure. you live now is 4 a.m. Uh, and they can't show in, this is a bit sad. So I think it's good the way we are doing it now. The most voted feature uh, mm -hmm. questions, we answer it here. Maybe. Sure. Let me know in the comments below or side or floating, whatever you are watching this. I think it's uh, I think it's a good move and move, move good step moving forward. But we're not gonna have this anymore. The mix of questions and live streams. I still have to see what they're gonna do with the Spanish live stream, um, but that's for another day. <laughs> Thank you, Dalai, for dropping by. One and a half hours. It's like a feature film. You're killing my summer. Planning to go climbing today? Yeah. Why not? Sure. Come join. Uh, Beach the Spanish community. Enjoy. Thank you, everybody in the chat, for staying until this far in the video. It's been a pleasure. It's been 109 live streams this way. Uh, next week we're gonna get more news. Please follow Blender Today on Twitter or uh, on. I think we're on Facebook as well. There is Blender.org, Blender underscore org on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. All the links are in the description below. Thank you. It's 10 a.m. in India. Crazy. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Thank you. It's so so nice to read all the comments saying... They're gonna miss you, Pablo. Yeah. Come on, it's <laughs> gonna be the same. We're just gonna do live stream and it's gonna be questions only. Thank you. And in five, four, three... You're not, yeah, you can listen, but I'm gonna blow your ear holes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's been a pleasure. We're gonna see each other next week. Same place, same time, different format. Stay tuned for the question thread, and I hope you enjoy as much as I do this planner today. See you next week.